Hi everyone, welcome to The Knit Shift. My name is Lara and today is Sunday, July 3rd, 2016. If you're new here, welcome and thank you so much for checking out my podcast. And if you are coming back, thank you so much for spending a little bit more time with me. I hope if you are American, I hope you're having a wonderful 4th of July weekend. If you are an American friend of the podcast, I hope you're having a fantastic July 4th weekend. If you are Canadian, I hope you had a fantastic Canada Day. And wherever else in the world you might be watching from, I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Uh, show notes can be found at thenitshift.com. This podcast is available on iTunes and YouTube. And I am on Instagram as Laura Mahalski, and I am on Ravelry as Yarnstormer. We also have a group for the podcast. If you search for the Knit Shift in the Groups tab, you will find us. So please come over and join. Um, there is a giveaway going on right now for a makeup pack from Rimmel, which I will talk about more at the end of the episode. Um, it continues, and uh, the, the winner will be drawn next week. So stay tuned for that. I should say, the winner will be drawn in the next episode of the knit shift so stay tuned for details on that uh, thank you for bearing with me as I took last week off from recording I ended up working on my weekend both days quite a bit so I just had no mental space or energy to bring you guys a podcast it wouldn't have been my best wouldn't have been my best effort so thank you for bearing with me as I took the week off I have a good bit of knitting to share with you since I did take off last week. Um, in fact, most of my knitting was done in the past week. I, um, I found that I didn't knit as much as I would have liked to on my weekend, and I really got a lot done in the past week. So between the work busyness and coupled with the fact that I didn't knit a lot in the first week I was off, um, I, really, I really ramped it up this week and have a lot of work to show for it. I have a finished knit to share with you. I have quite a few works in progress. And again, I will share the details of the makeup giveaway. And for the first time in a long time, I have some patterns to share with you that I've been oogling on Ravelry. So stay tuned for that. The first finished knit I have to share with you this week is a pair of socks for my grandma, who is turning 94 in just a few days. So happy birthday, Mimi. Um, she doesn't know that I have a podcast or um, what a podcast is probably. She is hep to know uh, what FaceTime is because I FaceTime when my parents are, are with her, um, but I, I don't think she knows what a podcast is, but she would appreciate it just the same. Um, my grandma is very knit worthy. She's the only grandparent I have left. Um, she, whenever she wears the previous socks that I've made her, she, if, if I happen to be around her or I, I FaceTimed with her, um, sh she shows me the socks, be it in person or in or on through, through the camera on FaceTime. She'll say, oh, look what I'm wearing and pull up the pant leg and show me that she's wearing the socks. So she's one of the sweetest people I have ever been lucky enough to know, let, it, let alone be related to. So she very much deserved a pair of socks. Unfortunately, I can't share them with you in person because they've already been mailed to her and she has received them um, in the two week period I was off. And I will insert a photo of them here, but this is Opal Flower Power, which is a discontinued Opal sock line. I don't know the colorway name, but this was very deep stash that I purchased from a now closed yarn store in Asheville, North Carolina. I knit these on a size one, uh, which is a 2.25 millimeter. And I use my trusty Chiaogu needles, which are my stand, golden standard for sock knitting. I love them. I, I knit Magic Loop, Toe Up. Um, these were knit one at a time, but I, I normally do two at a time. And these were actually my eighth pair of socks for the year. I counted them up and I looked on my Ravelry page. You know, we all like to take accounts of where we are in our knitting journey, I guess you could call it. For the year and I discovered I was on my eighth pair of socks which is fantastic because I try to knit a pair a month so I'm I'm ahead of the game right now with eight pairs done already in fact last year I only knit ten pairs of socks overall so I'm on track to surpass my the number of uh, pairs of socks that I knit last year but I'm finding that as I finish socks lately I'm getting afflicted with a disease I'm going to call ribitis um, as I get to the ribbing of the final sock in a pair, 
I really want to drop everything and cast on a new sock. And as I'm knitting the ribbing on that final sock, all I want to do is cast on a new pair of socks. I'm really in a sock frame of mind. Um, I don't, I'm not a big knit along participator, but I am participating in Amanda, um, AKA Amanda of not a podcast. She has done socket to summer every summer for a few years now. And I'm really motivated to knit quite a few socks this summer. So, um, my grandma's socks are my second pair for Amanda's knit along. Um, and I have more socks to share with you in a little bit, but anyway, I, I'm finding that in a, another sock that I'm knitting right now, I just finished the sock. It's a hoe that I'll show you in a few minutes here. And even as I'm on the ribbing of that sock, it's not even the second sock yet. I'm thinking about what I want to cast on next for socks. So that's what these guys are here. These skeins of yarn. I'll talk about them in a little bit about potential future socks. So, um, that's grandma's socks. I have this much yarn left over. Um, I had to, I had a little incident and I had to cut the leftover yarn. I don't normally split up, uh, opal sock yarn into two cakes. Um, I knit my socks one at a time. I knit these one at a time for my grandma and um, probably have about 30 grams left over, I'm guessing. So this will be, these will be minis put in a blanket, etc. Um, my first work in progress I will show you is a half, half object. I, this is very, very freshly cast off um, as in two hours ago, pretty much on the nose. This is my first sock in a pair of sock blank socks. Oh, and my point that I was saying earlier, all right, delete everything there. So as I was saying, I've knit eight pairs of socks this year and I realized that only one of them was for myself. So as I was finishing my grandma's socks and as I was finishing another sock this week, I've been just this, this ribitis, I'm in the ribbing and I keep thinking ahead. What do I want to knit next in the way of, in the, in, in uh, the way of socks? You know, what do I, what do I want on my needles next? And I really decided I need to buckle down and knit a pair of socks for myself because, um, two of the pairs I've knit were for my grandma. One is for a friend who moved away. One is for my boyfriend's mom. One is for my brother. Gosh, who, oh, one is for another friend who moved away. And I know I'm missing at least a pair in there, but I, I really need to make myself a pair of socks. So this is where my half finished, half finished knit comes in this week. This is a sock from a sock blank, which I will talk about in a bit. Um, sock blanks are a really unique way to knit socks these days, and I am really pleased with how this turned out. This is Black Market Wool um, in her Curse Words line. I don't know the name of the uh, line, but she, well, I'll explain what a sock blank is here. It's a knitted piece of fabric on which a dyer paints a message or paints words or paints images, and then you knit from the piece of fabric. So the yarn is crinkly. As you knit it, you can see my little edging here that I have, my, I have to weave in the ends here. Um, this is literally fresh off the needles. I, I've cast this off two hours ago. Um, so I'm about, I'm almost halfway through the blank. I could have got, made it a little bit taller, but I felt like the height was all up, was as tall as I wanted it to be. So I, I knit these my typical style. I cast on 32 with Judy's Magic Cast On. I don't think that will focus very well, but um, cast on 32 with Judy's Magic Cast On. I increased every third round for a nice wide toe. Uh, I think I increased to 68 stitches on the foot. I did a gusset and heel flap. And you can see I have a little bit of a hole there where the gusset and heel flap meet. And I usually take uh, an extra piece of yarn and kind of weave, weave a little bit around there to help tighten that up a little bit. I did a slip stitch heel and I carried on up the leg for 68 stitches around until I did 80 rounds on the leg of stockinette and then I did 40 rounds of 2x2 two two ribbing. So I'm quite pleased with how this worked out. Um, the stitch marker is here to keep track of where I am in a number of rows. I like to do an even number of rows such as 80 for the leg and 40 for the ribbing. So every 10 rows I would move up my marker to count. So. Um, 
So yeah, I'm very pleased with this. Um, and I will show you the other half of the blank. And again, I'm sorry if cursing offends you, but there is a curse word on the sock blank. I knit this on my size zero, two millimeter Chiaogus. As I said before about my grandma's socks, these are my favorite, hands down. And here's where I am in the, uh, in the sock blank. It says, I'm a bleeping unicorn. And the unicorn is entirely in here, as is this purple that's in the ribbing is part of the G in the curse word. So there you have it. I'm very excited to cast on the mate and get it going. Um, this is a this is Black Market's wool, Black Market Wool's Rollins sock, which is a 75-25 merino nylon. It's very soft and I think it will wear quite well. So I'm looking forward to wearing these. It's on the thin side though, so I definitely had to stick to a size zero. Put that over there. Since I'm on a sock kick, let me show you the next sock on the needles. As I said, while I was knitting my grandma's socks, I had a case of ribitis and I picked out yarn and wound it up and cast on a new pair of socks. Um, this is the needle I used on my grandma's socks. It's a size one, 2.25 millimeter, but I decided to cast on two at a time for this pair of socks. Now you'll see there's only one on the needles, so I'll get to that, but, um, I realized this needle, I believe this is a 24 inch needle, it is in no way, in no way long enough to do magic loop two at a time. So I kept the, you know, I would pull the cord out and then the other end, you know, the halfway point would disappear, you know, that it would, the sock would just totally eat up the needle. So I, and I ended up right about here, you know, as I got to the end of the toe cuff or toe cup, I decided to take the second sock off the needles and just knit these one at a time. Um, this yarn feels like butter. It's a merino cashmere nylon, and I, I don't mind knitting them one at a time because it feels so nice to knit with. It's really, really an enjoyable knit. So I've been really itching to do a pair of two at a time sock. It's socks. It's been a little while since I've done, done a pair two at a time. So I have a feeling that once I get beyond the heel, uh, when I do the heel turn on my sock blank socks, I will probably cast on a pair of two at a time um, just to get those going to satisfy that urge. So this is Western Sky Knits Magnolia Sock. And again, it's an 80-20-20 merino cashmere nylon. Did I say 80-20-20? That makes no sense mathematically. 80-10-10 merino cashmere nylon. And again, it's a size one. This is, I believe this is a 66 stitch sock. That's That's normally two off from where I would either do a 64 or a 68, but I was messing around with the stitch count since I had two on the needles at the same time. And I thought I'm knitting these two at a time. I don't have to think about it. I'll just go with a weird stitch count because I think that'll fit my foot okay. And now I have to actually pay attention to the first sock so that I can knit the second sock. Um, and that really is the key reason I really love knitting socks two at a time. Whatever I do to sock number one, I do to sock number two. I don't have to take notes. I don't have to think about how long to make the second sock. I can just roll with it. That's above all is what I love about knitting socks two at a time. Well, that and the fact that when you finish the pair, when you take them off the needles, you are done. You don't have to knit a second sock. That right there is all why I'm all about two at a time. That being said, I am not someone who suffers from second sock syndrome. I can't believe I'm admitting that because I know it's a very common affliction, but I just don't let second socks linger. I knit a sock and then I knit the mate. I'm not someone who can have 10 sock whips going and like have five of them done and then cast on the mates willy nilly. I really need to finish a pair in a timely fashion. So I say that and watch, I'm gonna, it's gonna happen this year, I guarantee it. So I'm really loving this. I keep sitting here and I'm kind of awkwardly stroking this yarn because it is so buttery, you guys. This merino cashmere nylon is amazing. This is a 378 yard cake. Um, so it'll be perfect for a pair of socks for myself. And you can see it's this great white and silver and different shades of brown. And there are these pops of aquamarine, turquoise blue, 
and it's just really, really pretty. There's navy in there, there's some green, some gold, and it's just knitting up very, very lovely. I'm so pleased with this. I'm trying to get it to focus. Yes, I love that so much. And I am carrying this around in my llama bag from Danica Studio. My next work in progress is a shawl that you've seen before. This is the Eye Blink Shawl by Heidi Allender. And I had a little bit of a whoopsie in the two weeks since I last spoke with you. I started the lace and then I had to rip out the lace because the pattern is set up. Um, I won't, I'll, I'll show the chart briefly, but basically there's a chart and a chart and a key. And instead of following, instead of reading it like a logical human being with logic, I, my eyes did not go to the chart at the top of the page. I decided to start with the chart in the middle of the page. It's clearly labeled. It's entirely user error. It's not the pattern designer's fault. I'm just an idiot is the bottom line. So I'm knitting along and I'm like, oh boy, this lace looks nice. And you know, the stitch count worked out fine. This is one of those very simple shawl patterns that you can basically start the lace wherever. So starting with the second chart was not a problem. Um, and I thought maybe I could just keep going with that chart over and over again, but it didn't seem like it was feasible. So I basically set it aside for a night and I sent a message to my friends uh, uh, in a group text and I said, oh my God, you guys, oh, what am I going to do? Oh, and like got it out of my system. That noise, Grace, the dog is at the end of the couch and she did not like my, my cries of woe. I basically ripped the entire thing off the needles, all 200, 300 some stitches and very, very carefully put it back on. That was kind of a nightmare to be quite honest, but I got it done back to the stockinette and I restarted the lace. So that's where I am. So a small price to pay for this frustration. I just, I couldn't bring myself to unknit three or four rows of lace and stockinette when it's like 300 stitches per needle. I can't, I can't do it. So it's very, very modest so far this lace progress, but it's very simple and I'm really loving it. Um, this is a crescent shaped shawl and again it's called I Blink by Heidi Allender and I have 800 yards which I will show you I will tell you more about the yarn in a minute here and it's curling up a little bit but um, let me see if I can show you the pattern photo so that's what it'll look like when it's all done really pretty simple lace and I'm loving this yarn. This is Hazel Knits Artisan Sock, which is a 9010 Merino Nylon Superwash. And the colorway is Nymph, and I just think it's exquisite. It's kind of a gray purple. Really, really pretty stuff. And this is a gift for my sister-in-law for Christmas. I'm using a size 6. 4.6 is a 3.7, 6. US 6 is a 4 millimeter needle. So that's what I'm using. I'm, use, I'm carrying this in an Erin Lane bag, which I, I really like. And my final work in progress to share with you is a crochet project, which I have not featured a crochet project on this podcast in at least a year, probably more like 15, 16, 17 months. So um, it's a scarf that I'm working on. Um, the sad news is, though, I'm probably going to have to frog it. I don't know what I did with a crochet hook. I cannot find it. I pulled out the project to show it to my brother when we FaceTimed earlier because it's for him. And now I can't find the darn hook. So maybe I'll, I'll go pick up the chair and move it around and hopefully it just rolled under my, my knitting chair. So my brother asked me to knit him a, or I'm sorry, to make him a thinner scarf in his alma mater colors, um, which is Ohio State, so scarlet and gray. So I did a little recon and I decided to crochet it because I've, I'm not gonna knit a scarf out of fingering weight yarn. I decided fingering weight would be the right choice to make it thinner and lighter. And um, 
I just decided crochet would be best. So I went to Knit Picks and I picked out some Capretta, which is a merino cashmere nylon, um, which seems to be the theme of the day. And I picked out Wine, which is this lovely burgundy, and Caviar, which is this dark gray. So it's a very kind of sophisticated adult version of the Ohio State colors. But I seem to have like lost a stitch or two right around the time I switched to the gray. Just looks like it's got a little skinny there, so I might I might rip the whole thing out and restart. Um, I was doing double crochet. This only took me a couple hours of work, so it's really not the end of the world. But I showed it to him, and I showed him how it was kind of airy, and he thinks it looks really nice. So, um, so this will this will be resumed when I find the hook or I rip it out and restart it. So that's neither here nor there. I have four balls of burgundy and four balls of gray, so I'm well set. But I was using a teeny tiny crochet hook and it was plastic, it was very tiny and very easy to lose and it's white, it blends in, so I don't know where it is. Let's see, so and I'm carrying this in my Annie and Company knitting bag which is from a yarn store in New York City. Okay, and that is it for my works in progress. Um, oh, feature socks. So this yarn I have sitting here, I keep thinking and thinking about what I want to knit next. And these yarns keep calling to me. You can see they kind of have a similar color vibe. So I must have sea, sea colors and just lovely sea green on the brain. The first co uh, colorway I picked up is a skein of Lamy Toes, which is dyed by Amanda of Not A Podcast. And this is the colorway Experiment 71, which is this lovely mint chocolate chip green with bursts of canary yellow and black and white and pink and oh it's just so pretty I, sh I should hold it up instead of sitting here oogling it right in front of my eyes and off camera it's blowing out a little in this light and I do apologize for the light because it is late in the evening and I'm doing my best to get as much light as possible so really loving this um, it's her Moon Pie Merino base, which is one of my favorites. It's a 7525, super duper soft, and I might do this for her knit along because she is offering a special prize um, for people who knit with her yarn in the knit along. And the other colorway I'm considering is this Pagewood Farm Denali, which is a Merino Nylon 8020. The colorway is peaceful and it's 450 yards. And this feels like it's more than four, I guess it is four ounces. It just must be really thin to get 450 yards in a four ounce skein. That's pretty thin sock yarn, so I'd probably have to use a size zero for this. But it's this lovely, lovely turquoise with parts of kind of a dark, dark olive green and navy. Oh, I just think this is so gorgeous. And I got this at Webb's in person a few years ago, so. So I'm thinking about both of those, but I'm not winding them up until I decide for sure. And I'm kind of making that a reward once I, say, finish my next sock. I, it's weird how I motivate myself. You know, like, you can, you can wind up some yarn, but only after you finish this current sock. It's kind of a weird decision. Okay, what next? I don't have any spinning to share. It's the Tour de Fleece, and it kind of snuck up on me this year. Um, I used to be a really big cycling fan to watch the tour. We canceled our cable a few weeks back, and I just, I know I'm not going to watch it. We don't have a DVR anymore. I haven't watched it in the past year or two anyway. I'm going to try to do some spinning during the tour. We'll see. I don't know, you guys. I feel like... Spinning is that boyfriend that you know you shouldn't get back with because he's bad news for you, but you should, but I don't know. I'm not making much sense right now, but I'm just not feeling the spinning. I'm feeling the knitting, and I need to do what makes me really happy right now. So for right now, knitting is it. Um, and that brings us to the final segment called Odds and Ends. So this is uh, just a little bit of random chatter about some stuff. I wanted to let you know that I'm doing so much better since my oral surgery a month ago. I had had trouble smiling. 
Um, and now I can smile again. Jeez. And I don't have pain. You know, my mouth feels different, but it doesn't feel like I'm in pain. Um, I will say, like, my the, two, the area where I had the surgery, I'm having a bit more temperature sensitivity. I can't really take bites of hot food or cold food, like right here. I have to just start on this side of my mouth. So I will talk to my doctor about her, uh, my dentist, when I see her in a few weeks. Um, just to know and I already use sensitive toothpaste so that's not doing much um, but I'm thrilled that my mouth is doing better work has been really busy lately I won't get into the details because it's pretty boring but I ran a couple really big meetings I've been working on a project for about six months and I led these meetings about it and it feels like there's a weight off my shoulders just to have gotten this far and my supervisors are really happy with it so far um, it's not finished. It will be come more finished down the road, but I'm very happy to be where I am, which is mostly done with this thing. Um, what else? I wanted to say uh, a big hello, not that she watches this, but my cousin's daughter, Kirsten, who is 11, has joined our ranks as a knitter. So as a bit of a, of a backstory, my mom and dad went to Indianapolis a few weeks ago to see my cousin's daughter, Caitlin, play in a volleyball tournament. Caitlin is 15, she maybe 16, she'll be 16 in the fall. She's a fantastic volleyball player. I'm sure she'll go to college and play. Um, really, really talented. And so Caitlin's mom and Kirsten's mom is my first cousin. And so Kirsten told my mom that she really wanted to learn to knit at the when my parents were coming to Indianapolis to meet them. Um, the, the, the cousins live in Florida, so it was a big deal for my parents to get to drive to Indianapolis to see them. So, um, <clears throat> and I think my cousin, Lisa, the mom of the two girls, I think my mom might be her godmother. I can't remember. That sounds right to me. So I have, tw I have 19 first cousins, so it's, it's easy to mix that stuff up. Anyway, tangents, many tangents. So Kirsten was so excited to learn to knit that before the trip, she got some chopsticks and went on YouTube and taught herself to knit and was flying by the time my mom met up with her. So on day two together, my mom decides to teach Kirsten cables. And she's cabling on day two of knitting like it's no thing. So watch out world, there is this amazing new knitter. Um, my mom said it's like she was born to knit. She's just so amazing at it. And if I, if I have my act together, I will insert a photo of my mom and Kirsten here. So I am so tickled to welcome a new knitter to the world. She's, Kirsten is a fantastic artist. She's an amazing, she's very good at drawing. You, you look at her, the stuff she draws and you think, there's no way she's only 11. So she's very talented and I think she is gonna be a fantastic knitter. And my mom took her to her first local yarn store in Indianapolis, I think it was called Mass Ave Knits or something like that, Mass, Massachusetts Ave Yarn, Avenue Yarns, I can't remember. Um, but she took her to her first yarn store and bought her some yarn. So Kirsten is, she's, she's all set and good to go. So um, just a reminder that I am having a giveaway for a little package of makeup from Rimmel. I belong to Gwinny Bee, which is basically Netflix for, for clothing. Um, and every so often they throw in to my package with my clothes, they throw in like a, a Blue Apron coupon code or, or something else, makeup. So I've gotten a couple makeup packages and I decided to keep one for myself and give one away. And it's a lipstick, an eyeliner, and a foundation sample. And the prompt is in the Ravelry group and I will draw a winner in the next thread. There's only been, I think, about 10 entries or so. So feel free to enter. The odds are, the odds are better than they are for most giveaways right now. So um, please do take advantage of that. And the final thing I wanted to talk about was some patterns that caught my eye. I'm scrolling through my notes on my phone right now. Apologies. So let me pull up my iPad here.
So the first pattern I have to share with you is called Wild Aster, and it's by Melissa Stajda of Hey Lady Hey. This pattern came out in May, so it's relatively new, and it is a one skein fingering weight shawl. And it's basically a shawl with a lot of different textures and I'm sorry, there's going to be this reflection from my lamp. Let me angle this so. So it's just a really pretty textured shawl. It's crescent shaped, so it's not super deep. Let me find another photo of it. And I just thought she posted a photo on Instagram, and I just thought it was so pretty. So there's some garter, and there's ribbing and it's just really really pretty I thought so I wanted to share that with you guys it's a paid for pattern um, it's six dollars it says designed to keep your mind busy there are many changes in texture throughout eyelets pearl bumps slip stitches double yarn over seed stitch pico bind off and she has written this in a row by row format if that is more your jam so the next shawl I want to share with you is called Kalara, and it's by um, someone whose name is either Amba or Amba. It's like the, the name Amber, but it's A-M-B-A-H. Amba O'Brien. And she has a Ravelry shop that is worth checking out, you guys. Um, and if, for, if you happen to see this by Tuesday, um, it just came out last month, and you can save a dollar off the $6 price with the coupon code Kalara which is the name of the pattern, through midnight July 5th. So I think you have through tomorrow night to, um, to get the discount. This is a two color shawl. It calls for two skeins of fingering weight. Um, let me pull up the overarching photo to show you first. I just think this is so pretty, you guys. And you can see it's kind of a, a simple uh, there's a solid and then there's a speckled yarn here and it's this offset bias stripe and I just think it is so pretty you know what this could be a really fun shawl for my the yarn that I dyed myself at a class that could be really fun with like a black or something or a purple let me find another photo And here it is on a mannequin. Isn't that pretty? I think that's so nice. Just garter, basic garter, nothing too fancy, but it, oh, and the, where the vertical line is, look at how nice that looks. Oh, I just think that's so pretty. Right down the middle there, really nice stuff. And I believe that is everything for me today. Um, thank you again for sticking with me while I was out last week. And I hope to be back in a regular weekly schedule, but as I said last time, um, things are a little crazy right now at work, so we'll see how it goes. Um, so again, happy 4th of July to my American friends, and have a fantastic holiday weekend, and I will see you soon.